Hey guys and welcome to another schematics update, this time criticizing Megaquarium. What is Megaquarium and what do we think about the game? We will capture that in the following couple of minutes. But before that, I want to introduce my fish companions here, Blind and Jaunty. Hello. Hello. <laughs> That was my fish voice. So let's dive into it. We got code early. Thanks for that to Twice Circled. And we played it a bunch. What is Mega Aquarium? All right. So I guess I'll start off with this. Mega Aquarium is essentially Zoo Tycoon with fish tanks. It's a tycoon game where you build an aquarium. And it's kind of cutesy and adorable and very open-ended and sandboxy. That sounds fishy. Is, oh, fuck. How long have you wanted to say that? Sorry. You thought of that like a week ago, didn't you? Since he hit the record button. <laughs> um, I like the Zoo Tycoon analogy because you've kind of got the two major aspects. You've got to you've got to look after the fish and make sure they have decent welfare and stuff. But then also mm -hmm. you have the uh, the actual business side of things. You've got to look after the guests as they come in and make sure they're having a good time as well. So I kind of like the, those two things that in some ways work well together, but in other ways they can actually be a little bit... Um, uh, you know, against each other, you know, you've got to kind of balance those. I, I, I kind of like that. A number of months ago, we had the opportunity on this channel to speak with the developer of this mm -hmm. game, Tim. He pitched it to us as a theme park game, which I thought was very interesting. He compared it to games like Roller Coaster Tycoon and other theme park games. Uh, simulation games, except instead of building rides and attractions, you're building fish tanks, which I thought was kind of a, a strange comparison. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Uh, one thing I will say is that it is a better theme park simulator than Roller Coaster Tycoon World, but that's only <laughs> because Roller Coaster Tycoon World was so bad. But yeah, no, I think I think the Zoo Tycoon analogy is, is kind of perfect, yeah. really. We got the key given to us a few days ago, didn't we? But unfortunately, I've been tied up with other things. So if anybody able to sit down with it this afternoon, mm -hmm. I think my thoughts so far can be summed up with the term pleasantly surprised. Okay. Been on my radio for a long time. I'm, I'm a fan of the developer. I liked Big Pharma, although I'm not massively into the the uh, conveyor belt games. So yeah. this was on my radar pretty much as soon as he announced it. But all the ways in my back of my head, I was kind of like, oh, that might be cute for a, you know a little bit of a play or whatever. But it's really surprised mm -hmm. me how how large this is in scale. You know, just the amount of stuff available for you to do. For me, my initial impressions are, and I wasn't expecting this going in. This game is absurdly relaxing. Mm -hmm. It's a very zen experience and I was talking about this before we started recording but I think a large portion of that for me personally is I've I owned fish most of my childhood ever since I moved out I haven't had fish and just the sounds that the fish tanks make are very convincing to what a fish tank sounds like and it's just a very pleasant sound combined with the super upbeat happy music in the background it's just very very relaxing and fun and kind of chill. It kind of has the feeling of an aquarium. I don't know if you guys go to aquariums. We go to aquariums quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I've been to the aquarium. They are. They are very chill, and they have that kind of. And it really sort of encaptures that sort of feeling of an aquarium pretty pretty well, actually. Yes, I can see the point that it's kind of relaxing watching the fish just swim around and do nothing. But on the other hand, uh, maybe it's just my playstyle because I'm always on fast forward. Mm. It can be quite strange. <laughs> at least for seconds where everywhere these small little logos pop up and say your fish is gonna die like right now and I'm like oh my god oh my god they all gonna die but in the end they don't but I'm, I'm quite early in the game I've only played the first couple of levels but one thing I'll say about that is apart from all of the issues so far that I've seen that can happen come from uh, staffing. So mm -hmm. so basically, the things you have to keep an eye on with your fish are how the tank is set up, uh, whether it has the right stuff in there for them, like plants and, and yeah. caves and hideaways and things, whether the temperature is acceptable and whether it's filtered enough. As long as everything's running okay, all of that, all of those don't change. Much like with Zoo Tycoon, and you had to do the three squares of sand and four squares of sand was too much for the antelope. Once it's done, it all it all stays the same. There's no variation with that. So as long as your filter and your heater and your food is put in there, and uh, the filter and the heater need to be repaired, and the food needs to go in daily. As long as all three of those are, are okay, then everything's fine. And all three of those all seem to just come back to having enough staff. So I think as long as there are enough staff on the boards, you, it is one of those games where you mm. can just kind of sit there, sit back and let it Again, run. Again, kind of my playstyle because I think I overbuilt 
at least in the first couple of uh, levels. So I had quite big aquariums and I had every staff member I could hire hired and still it wasn't enough. Maybe it was because I didn't use the zones. You can assign staff to zones. Maybe, and maybe you not. just built past built past the number of staff you exactly you just built too big basically. Exactly. One of the interesting things I like about this, in some ways, in some ways I don't like about it, is that you are it's you're you're playing in a void. Mm -hmm. you, the just the the play the, the the play area is just in front of you, and at any point, as long as you have the money for it, you can expand this play area in any direction. I've never seen a system like this in a game like this before. I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. yeah, the way you just kind of click on the edge of the map and then just drag it out. You can also cut back in because mm -hmm. I, I find myself when I'm constructing in a map like this when it's just, oh, you can just build your own map, essentially. I, I keep finding myself building like these weird horseshoe shapes or like big circles that kind of come back and connect to themselves. Uh -huh. And it's it ends with really interesting little passageways and stuff going through the center. I, I yeah. like it for all those reasons you just said. And, and being able to just select any way you like and not be restrained is pretty good. But there is part of me that kind of likes the idea of me building this aquarium in a world. Mm. It feels a little bit um, sort of separate. And I, I, part of me likes the idea of having not necessarily the go as far as the sort of set building shapes in something like Two Point Hospital yeah. that's come out recently, yeah. because I think those can be very limiting and it makes a very different game. Yeah. But I think somewhere in the middle where you, there's a very large space that you can build into, but at the edge of that space, there are roads there are shops there are trees there are so you are you are in building this aquarium as part of a city sure but i i think that the fact that it's in a void and you're just kind of free to expand your map as much as you want also the fact that you're limited to the number of staff you can have kind of adds into an interesting little puzzle that is only supported by your own self-restraint from just building a massive map mm -hmm. really quickly y you have the freedom to build that but you have to be smart about how you do that i don't know i i think that i can just kind of imagine the edge of a map pretty easily and i don't need that extra character and to me it's just it's pleasant to just watch the inside but you yeah. know to each to his own one thing that i will mention is there's a few parts of the building and the camera movement that feel almost clunky to me Especially when you zoom all the way in, it has kind of a first-person camera mode that just feels kind of unfinished. And there are certain camera angles that the camera will do that don't feel right. I almost wish there was more restrictions on the camera. Even, mm. even to the point where it just rotated on four axes. You yeah. can kind of go right down flat almost. Yeah. And it, I can't imagine that ever being useful, you know. And I, I found myself getting the camera stuck down there a couple times and like having to fiddle with it to kind of coax the camera back to where I wanted it. I kind of wish that it had a bit more of a locked camera like Parkitect, for example. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I maybe people will be able to get some cool screenshots out of it. Let's, m let's move on a little bit and talk about the the level structure because there is a level based campaign and I th on launch there will be a sandbox mode as well kind of wondering if that's going to be necessary though because the 10 level campaign seems to be pretty open ended as is I imagine because obviously the map itself is open ended uh, so the only thing a sandbox really would give you is everything unlocked and no currency requirements mm, I, yeah. I, pretty much they're the only they're the only things that don't make this a sandbox game is that uh, cash currency but then there are also three sub currencies that, mm -hmm. that may be too many to be honest with you i'm not quite sure yet uh, there's a currency that unlocks uh, fish or i think coral as well yeah. so living things basically and then there's another currency that unlocks uh, like actual tank upgrades and uh, you know new filters and things and i assume that also unlock things that the guests can use like toilets and things like that i guess and then there's a third currency uh, called prestige which unlock levels you as a player i guess level up and mm -hmm. when those levels then unlock the stuff to be allowed to be unlocked by the previous currencies. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> For me, it does. Yeah. I think it's one of those systems where when it's explained to you, it makes no sense. But when you're playing it, it just makes perfect sense. Mm. But personally, that the last one, the prestige one, the game could not have that. And it would pretty much play identically. Yeah. But I, I guess it's it's a little bit of Skinner Box, isn't it? You know, we just we like mm. to g go up in level, yeah. you know, so maybe it's just there for that kind of reason, just to gate content a little bit. I think it's that plus that it's not overwhelming for a new 
players because I think I played the most of us and it's mm -hmm. getting complicated. You have fish that likes warm water that you need to heat up and then you have fish that likes cold water that you need to cool down and then you have circular tanks for special fish and it's, it's getting complicated and I'm pretty happy that you're not gonna get thrown in there oh, but absolutely. you need to level up if they gave you everything off the start, you'd be overwhelmed. I mean, even on level two that I was on, and it gives you something, I mean, I've got about 15 fish or something. A couple of times I had to stop and, and look over and I was like, oh, I've, no, I've got some of those and I've got some of those and yeah. those work with those. And it, there's, there's a lot in there and maybe to a fault, but now I'm actually going to ask for one more thing. I'd like to know where the fish come from in the world. Mm. Um, even if the game itself doesn't really care, just even just like a little map uh, with a highlighted area on because pretty much every aquarium i've mm. been to is sectioned by places in the world pretty much so i'd like to be able to know where the fish are because i'm gonna i'm the sort of player who's gonna want to make the place look nice i'm gonna want to kind of play that way so i, I really like a, just a line of information or a little map or something that says this thing's from the you know, south coast of Africa or whatever. This mm. now that you mention it, I kind of wish that this game had an encyclopedia, which is just a to search up the fish name and yeah. here is everything you need to know about this fish. Because games like this, we were talking about this a lot with Project Hospital, almost end up becoming educational in a weird way. Yeah, without trying to be. Yeah, and also I don't I don't necessarily want all of that information to affect gameplay. No, it doesn't need to. Um, you know, I think I think the game has enough parameters already regarding fish when it's got its temperature and you know the amount you can oh, have. Totally. Oh, yeah. I think I think that's enough, but I, I just from a from a, like a, a flavor point of view, I would like I would like some extra stuff about each fish. Totally, we sh we should uh, complain for a moment here because that's what we're here to oh, do, yeah. right? So um, this game is missing some features that me and Adfo at the very least think are pretty mandatory for games in the current year. Uh, the first one, which Adfo brought up, was a borderless windowed mode. Um, if you have a multi-monitor setup, playing a game in non-borderless windowed mode is really annoying if you're in full screen. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you even have to tab out, or if it does allow the mouse to go off screen, which this one does, but then when you click off screen, it minimizes the game. Sometimes it's just nice to watch the game run and watch your little fish swimming around and your staff running around and feeding the fish and your guests running around and all these little logos pop up and uh, just watching it run. And I can't even type with you guys on Discord and see what's going on on my screen because it's minimized and that's a pain in the ass. Not only that, but it's fatal for every streamer. Mm -hmm. Oh, totally. Yeah, it's a, such a niche. It's such a niche thing. Still, I know, but uh, yeah, as a YouTuber or streamer, these are the little things that really help us out. But in turn, it helps the game out. Like one thing, I, I when I went down to uh, Two Point and they said mm -hmm. anything you want to see, anything you want to add, I was like, please, a high UI mode, just high UI. Yeah. The the amount of people who will care is so small because it just helps us get thumbnails for YouTube and stuff. But in turn, it's going to help you because we're going to be able to present your game better. Since you brought it up, Two Point has the same issue. It doesn't have a borderless windowed mode, and I hate the game for that. <laughs> <laughs> At least right now in the pre-release version, the audio settings aren't saved. As soon as you close the game and open it up, you have the music playing again, uh, which I turned off because I like to listen to my own music while building, especially games like that. I know it's a little complaint, and I, I think it, I hope it kind of seems like an fixed. oversight that'll get fixed. Yeah, that definitely seems like something that'll be patched. Yeah. On the topic of music, I quite like the music selection that plays in the background. I wish there was more of it. There's like three tracks, and they repeat, and they're not very long. Uh, I haven't I haven't noticed that yet because I'm still only quite short into it. I think the tracks that are there are pretty good. They have that sort of wishy washy, tinkly water type music. You know, it sort of uh, brings up the idea of an aquarium. A friend of the good. show, Billy M F Mays, said that it sounded like iPhone commercial music. Uh, they, if they need to be hand clapped, that to make it proper iPhone music. music. <laughs> uh, I just wish that there was more of it. Um, now, this is specifically kind of a me issue. Um, I think that the UI organization in this game is very good, uh, especially the way it yes. kind of reorganizes itself. The, the game becomes a spreadsheet really quickly when you start looking at a lot of different fish. However, there is no UI scaling option, which for me is 
is kind of a death sentence in playing this game in full screen. I have a very large monitor and I don't see well. So if I'm going to play this game in full screen, it's really difficult for me. So I have to play in a small window um, in order to blow the UI up to the size that I need to play it. The other thing, the game's UI is very transparent. Now, because the game becomes a spreadsheet really quickly, I understand why it's transparent because you need to be able to see what's going on behind it. However, because the UI is so transparent, if I have a camera at certain angles with certain fuller colorings and things behind it, I can't actually read the text on the UI or see the UI at all. Granted, I don't see well, so this might be unique to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know, nope. but I would really like transparency options. Yeah, I have like pretty decent vision with specs on, but I'm quite colorblind. I have a... a, a, a tries an opiate deficiency and that kind of is it i guess it's blue yeah the mm -hmm. the, the logo the icons are in blue that that's really tough to see mm. when it's over the the white floor so just the option to change that color would be i, I can't imagine a massive thing i don't know if you guys have been watching mark brown's you know, the game makers toolkit uh, he's doing a really great series on on making uh, designing games for disabilities and there's a really good one on on, on visual impairments and color blindness and stuff i have to agree i uh, think the ui for me it's more like it's it's slightly too big because I have quite a large monitor, but I'm very close to it and I can see very well. Uh -huh. And I sometimes I th feel like it's taking up a little bit too much space for me. Uh, yep. The transparency, I have issues with that as well sometimes. Another thing that I put in here for UI scaling is when you research new fish the newly researched fish isn't highlighted and the fish have the real life names and they can be quite long or complicated and if you're playing and you're in your flow you kind of miss yeah. <laughs> the newly researched fish sometimes i think I, I like the fact that it's very realistic but when you when you are getting to like 20 30 fish in there and there's the difference between the azure black bar soldier fish demoiselle and the king black bar dota fit that that kind of highlighting new stuff in a menu is that's a pretty standard ui technique now isn't it you know the layout of the ui is pretty good yeah Agreed. it's it's all quite it's it's quite intuitive I, I very quickly figured out where stuff is that you know it all kind of flows quite nicely and makes a lot of sense especially um i've been playing a lot of the universe sim at the moment and the ui on that is horrific they like stuff's just all over the place with no organization at all and it is really nice to see some some they've obviously taken time to yeah. think about user flow yeah I, I love the way the UI just kind of reorganizes yeah. itself. And also, the top right has a few options for tiling them and, and stuff as well, and closing them all, and yeah, which is really handy. I think we should talk about the next point right now, because this game is made by one person. Yeah, Tim's done a fantastic job. That's all I can say. I, I really like the game. We, we poke at things that we enjoy, and uh, I look forward to playing through at the very least the missions and i have a feeling this will be a game that i pop back into for a while when i'm finished working and i just want to keel over and die i think as far as <laughs> as far as a um uh, as like commercial success i i really hope this does well and i can see it doing well i can see um i think mm -hmm. uh, you know management sims tycoon games are having a huge resurgence at the minute which i love i think it really fit well in there he's got he's got great precedent with big farmer um, I, I really hope it does well for him because I, I genuinely think the game deserves it. it I, like I said right at the beginning, I'm pleasantly surprised by this and I'm really looking forward to diving into it more. That almost sounds like a conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> Good, aren't I? It's like I've done this before. <laughs> so, Blind, what's your conclusion? It's a very nice game that's very pleasant to play. Uh, it's a little bit clunky in places, but that's to be expected. It scratches the Zoo Tycoon itch. And at the same time, I really like fish, so that's a plus. And it's just a very nice game to play. I think I think okay, I really like yeah. fish. Blind IRL, it should be on the front of the box. <laughs> I really like I think, the fish. I, I, I really like the fish. <laughs> I do. Um, I think that the the promising thing for me is all the issues we have are all very fixable patchable stuff. You know, the actual core. Oh, yeah, the core yeah. game is really quite solid. I don't care about fish. I honestly, what? I don't even <laughs> like eating fish. I was kind of surprised how fun it is. 
Um, at first, I thought, well, that's kind of simple. Just slap a couple of tanks in there and put some fish in it. But after a while, it gets really complicated. I mean, it, not complicated, but deep. So I, I like that. Just like the tanks that you're putting the fish in. There are deep tanks. <laughs> uh, There's some that people way. can walk through as well, which is pretty cool. Although, although I'd oh, like to be able yeah. to make those any size I like and draw the tunnel into them. I know me and Blind were talking about on Twitter the other day. With these kind of games, it doesn't really matter about the setting as long as the, the core mechanics are there. I mean, look back at some of the classic simulation games before they were there. Who ever thought, oh, wouldn't it be a good idea to, to look after a hospital? Or, you know, wouldn't it be a good idea to look after a golf course? I totally agree with you, um, especially in one point. It's very accessible for new players or not so experienced players, even kids. But in the end, it's deep enough for management players to keep interest in it in the later stages. And that's really hard to mm -hmm. make. So hats off, Tim. So let's wrap this up. First of all, John G, thanks for joining. Hey, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me. If you want to see a Let's Play of this as well, check Geekism, because I'm going to be uh, Let's Playing this hard this next week. Great. And thanks for you guys out there. Um, first of all, let us know what's your opinion. Do you like fish? How do you like it? Do you like it fried or <laughs> at sushi or in your fish tank? Let us know in the comment section. If you like the video, hit the smash button. Uh, smash? Hit the smash button? What? <laughs> hit that smash, smash button. The, uh, <laughs> hit the smash, hit brothers. <laughs> 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 okay. Hit the like button. If you really like the video, you may want to consider heading over to Coffee to buy the editor, in this case my mom, a coffee, so she can stay up all night in front of the computer editing this video just for you guys out there. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching again. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>